Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we're going to unpack the amount sliders that are in Brilliance AI and On One Photo Raw 2024. Uh, recurring common question I've been getting from lots of you photographers out there about those sliders and how do they relate to the tone and color adjustments in Develop. So I'm going to uh, you know un unwind this for you and hopefully demystify it for you in this video. Real quick, if you are adding On One Photo Raw or any of On One's tools to your toolkit, kit, please use the offer code I have below. Saves you money, gives me a little bit of support, and then I can do more videos like this. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's connect the dots between Brilliance AI and Tone and Color. Okay, so let's open up Brilliance AI, turn that on, and we have this amount slider. I mean, I've talked about this in, in previous videos. I can have you know less of the Brilliance effect, I can have more and really crank it up. But what's really going on here is that Brilliance AI sets a variety of things in Photo Raw. It changes sliders in tone and color. It will add local adjustments. If the photo is noisy, it can add no noise automatically, detect faces. I have a separate video that explains you know, the, the concept of Brilliance AI. But here I wanna talk about, you know, well, what is this slider really doing? What is a mount doing? And what it's doing is adjusting things in tone and color. So I open up tone and color here. We have a, a bunch of different sections, but the, the important ones for this conversation is tone, structure, and color. And let me scroll this a little bit so we can see most of those sliders there, but I still got this amount slider. Remember, this is Brilliance AI up here. So as I pull Brilliance AI down to zero, you kind of see all those different sliders just kind of go back to their default locations. In tone and color, everything went to zero, right, in tone and in structure and saturation and vibrance. And then the temperature and tint just kind of went to the auto setting here. You know, so if I'll double click on the amount in Brilliance AI, things jump back up. And you know, like highlights is, an ex is a good example. That's a, a pretty big adjustment that Brilliance AI made on the tonality of this photo. Did a little bit with saturation and vibrance down here. But now if I push it in the opposite direction, you'll see like the, the look on the photo gets obviously very exaggerated because the sliders in tone and color are being pushed even harder. So that's the fundamentals. We see this amount slider and it's adjusting tone and color sliders. You're like, okay, Scott, I could have figured that out. Uh, but I, I wanna go a little bit deeper and give you some additional understanding of well, which way are the sliders going? <laughs> Why are they going in that direction? And then I want to look at the uh, the other two amount sliders we have in Brilliance AI. So let's keep going here. Now I mentioned that highlights slider here in tone and color because that was a pretty dramatic change. Highlights got decreased, darkened quite a bit here. So if I take amount and I pull amount to the left, I am up in Brilliance AI. Let me scroll up here. We're in Brilliance AI. I'm saying I want less Brilliance AI. Look at that highlight slider. It's moving toward nominal, right? Moving toward zero. No adjustment whatsoever. That makes sense. I'm pulling the amount of Brilliance AI down to zero. I want no adjustment in my highlights. But then compare that against, say, let's look at midtones or structure. These are Actually, midtones is a bad example. Let's look at shadows and structure. These are positive numbers. Well, as I pull a mount back, those are becoming less positive. They're moving closer to zero. That's the whole idea here. Less amount, whatever slider, uh, whichever direction it deviated from zero, it's going to continue. It's going to get pulled back towards zero. Now, the opposite is true. If I have the amount and I want more brilliance, well, what will we see? We'll see contrast increase, right? It's positive, it'll become more positive. Right? More contrast, sorry, more brilliance AI, more contrast. More brilliance AI, less highlights. These will move farther and farther away from nominal. I think that, uh, that contrast did not want to move very much, but if you look at things like shadows that did go higher structure went a little bit higher because you know, it's going to be in relationship to how significant or subtle a change was made by brilliance ai but that's the the semantics here right if i have less brilliance ai 
the sliders will move toward their default or nominal state. More Brilliance AI, they'll move farther away from that. So one more time, less Brilliance AI, we see things converging toward zeros across the board in tone, structure, saturation and vibrance down in the color area, and the temperature and tint go toward whatever the, the automatic setting was. And then if we go in the opposite direction, we can see that temperature, tint, those move farther and farther from nominal. All the other sliders, once again, are moving farther away from that, uh, that center point. Okay, so do you need to care about that? Not really. I mean, you could just use the amount slider in Brilliance AI and look at the photo. And if you like the results, then you like the results. Where this becomes a little more helpful is at least understanding the other two amount sliders that are in Brilliance AI and what those adjust. So let's have a look in here in the fine tune area. We'll open that up. We have tone amount and color amount. What do these things do? Tone amount controls tone and structure. So if I take tone amounts and I just pull it down to zero, tone, structure went all to zero. Nothing changed in color, right? The reverse, color will only affect the color area. So if I take color and move it down to zero, tone, structure remain the same, color is completely re returned to the auto setting. So why, why do you need to know about that? Why is that useful? Well, this is where it becomes like, okay, um, I'm looking at the photo, I'm playing around with amount, and you know, as I push it like less, I, I actually kind of like that color treatment more, but then I'm, I'm losing the, the good amount of the tone. So if I want full tone but less color, I have these controls now, and vice versa. If I like the color but the tone change is just too much for me, I can play with it here. Or, or I want more color, but now I'm overboard on the tone. I want to be able to pull the tone back. So you have this push and pull here where, returning this to where it was, if I took a mount and I said, oh, I, want, I want more, and I like what it's doing with the warmth in the sky and so forth, but also this amount slider is affecting all of these tone and structure settings. Well, I don't want that. I want this amount, but I need to dial back that, uh, that tonal adjustment. So I can kind of pull back on just tone and structure and amp up color by playing these sliders against one another. More amount, less tone. And as I said, we could do the reverse. I could say more amount, but less color. And so I'm I'm increasing or like supercharging the tone, but tempering the color. Okay, so that's all fine and great, but you all are very sharp, astute photographers, and you're going, well, Scott, what happens when I go and adjust tone and color myself, and then I wanna go play with Brilliance AI? You know, what happens then? What, what, what goes on? So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and reset this whole thing here so that Tone and color, Brilliance AI, everything's nominal. So this is, this is the same if I just walked up, turned on Brilliance AI, I get these settings. And I look at this and go, you know, um, I kind of like that, uh, but you know, maybe um, I want to open the shadows a little bit more. And you know, maybe not so much in the highlights. Give me, give me a little extra highlights. And so I've done these changes. Now, what happens when I go into, say, tone and start to pull this down? Well, the same thing happens. I go all the way to the left, but notice that highlights shifted well beyond zero. And then I'll return that back because I've kind of reset the, the, the zero point in, in, in a sense. I've, I've changed what, uh, what Brilliance AI did. And so my new 100% in this case is right here. So as I, I move back on tone, I can go across that zero threshold if I went all the way. But the, the, the key point really is if you do go in and adjust these things and then decide at a, at a full tonal level you wanted to back things off a little bit, or at the complete tone and color level you wanted to back things off a little bit, your settings here and here in my example, 
they are honored, they are maintained, and they just become part of the overall adjustment, kind of like the uh, like like the master slider we used to have in tone, where you say, I, I, I want auto, but I, I want 70% of auto, or my settings, but 80% of my settings. You have all that control there, so you can still go and jump around and, and dive into the individual sliders if you need to, and as you're getting comfortable with Brilliant AI, ah, you know, don't be uh, too afraid about uh, playing around with those sliders, uh, those amount sliders. After a little bit, you may find that I know what I want for my tone and my amount sliders. You can you know, dial some of those things into your uh, your preferences so that Brilliance AI behaves more and more the way you want it to right out of the chute. Hope you found the video useful. Any other questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.